Hi, good morning. My name is Dr. Rajad Nan Ahmed, and I'm a psychiatrist working in UK. Uh, and with me this morning is Dr. Abrar, who's a ST5 uh, in uh, ST4, sorry, in pediatrics, working in Manchester. Um, and this video is specifically for the junior doctors who are about to start their first job. The IMG junior doctors who are start to the, uh, start their first job uh, in pediatrics in UK and they normally contact us and ask us you know what can we do to actually what do you expect from that job so Dr. Abrar first of all thank you for uh, giving me the time and uh, and uh, coming on this uh, uh, zoom meeting thank you very much um, okay so we'll start uh, with the experience like the junior doctors come in pediatrics at two different levels First, they come as tier one and tier two. I'll explain tier one is like the most junior person in the job. They can be FY2, they can be SHO, they can be a junior clinical fellow. Okay, they're basically the UK in pediatrics, UK, uh, sorry, in UK pediatric rota is divided into like three tiers. Tier one is the, uh, the first responder uh, to all the uh, queries for the patient. And tier two is also called middle grade. They are registrars or senior clinical fellows. And then tier three is the consultant. I so, think it's the same in other specialties as well. They normally, generally speaking, they are generally three tiers. You either are junior doctor or middle grade or a consultant. So yeah. you can, as you said, in pediatrics, you can either start as a junior doctor. If you are more experienced, then you will start in the middle grade. Exactly. Yeah. So that's all. So uh, when, when you start job in a pediatrics, I'll first uh, tell you about the uh, junior level, which we call tier one, SHO, junior clinical fellow, or FYs in pediatrics. So the expectation from you is that there are a few things which uh, like they expect you from. They, they don't expect you that you will have a, a lot of pediatrics knowledge. Nobody is expecting from a junior that they will have a lot of pediatrics knowledge. That's why they do induction. That's why they teach them uh, in the start. And then every week they teach them the most common scenarios in pediatrics and most common patients. And that's why most units have the their own uh, survival guide books. Like that's a unit uh, tailored book, like the most common cases and how you uh, do things in that particular unit. So nobody expects from you that we, you should have a lot of uh, clinical knowledge in pediatrics as a, at, a, at a junior level. What they expect from you is to come into the hospital in time and when you're in the hospital, you do the work, uh, whichever is asked from you, like that is reliability. Okay, and then reliability and then integrity, like whatever you're doing, be honest that if you are not able to complete a task, just communicate in time to the uh, seniors that you are doing the task, but you are not able to finish it in time so that they can allocate help with you. They can allocate a second person to complete that job. And other thing they expect from you is that uh, you are what uh, like uh, when you're seeing a patient, uh, they expect from you that you are able to take history. Okay, if you're not able to take history, I think that's the one thing you can work on before joining. So a good history, and then they're not expecting from you that you will make a diagnosis or you will make even differential diagnosis. What they're expecting from you is you you are taking a good history, and then you you are able to examine the patient. That's all. Even if you are not able to examine the patient, that's even bearable. But the good history is a uh, bare minimum. That's from the clinical side. And the job of a junior doctor in pediatrics, because the, it is mostly, uh, pediatrics is mostly middle grade and consultant led job. It's uh, juniors are just to, uh, are to support the unit. They are not seeing patients independently. They are allowed to see patients independently, but all the patients, whether they are being admitted or being are going home, they are seen by middle grade. Every single patient who comes to the pediatrics, they cannot go home or they cannot go to further like for admission without being seen by, physically seen by uh, middle grade. So juniors responsibility wise doesn't have a lot of responsibility. What they have to do is when they're seeing a patient, they just discuss with the uh, middle grade and then middle grade takes on their decisions. In emergencies, Things can be a bit varied, but this is the most uh, most of the time. This is what happens. So, uh, day to day work in uh, for a junior in the pediatrics is if you're in a ward, you just uh, go with the consultant or a middle grade to, to do the round. You you scribe for them. You write prescriptions. You write discharge letters, and then when you're in A and E, 
you if if it is a busy unit then uh, you're seeing patients with middle middle grade at the same time and are you seeing patients independently and then you're coming back and discussing with middle grades and then making decisions accordingly so you are not alone anywhere in the pediatric unit so you are always supported with the by a middle grade or by a, a consultant all the time so all they expect from you is that you are able to take a good history and when you are told to do something like to make to write discharge letters to write prescriptions or do certain patient jobs like referrals and those things and they expect you then they have been told to you and they will be done in a specific time manner okay and if you are not able to do complete those just communicate back that's all is the expectation from you at at a junior level and the, the, there are two different anxieties any when you were talking to describing that you know when you talk about doing cannula or bloods mm-hmm. uh, is this if somebody is coming from abroad they have never worked with children it might be difficult for them to do that and the other question was about the you said about medication prescription so in prescription obviously in children the prescription doses and things like are very different so how mm-hmm. do you do this these two things the new doctor will manage if they are an international graduate so uh, cannulas in uh, children can be a bit difficult so wh- what what you can do is you you can be honest in first few days just tell tell your colleague that you have an, you have never done cannula even it, it happened yesterday it, it 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 wasn't a international medical graduate so i had a junior with me who had just joined like an fy2 band only last week and uh, the person who was with me and uh, they said like they cannot do the uh, cannula on a neonate i said okay that's fine and even if, attending every single patient i am accompanying them so th- we already know that pediatrics is a sub specialty and most people hasn't worked before in pediatrics they can struggle in the start first week two weeks three weeks okay so we we support them so with cannulas just observe first couple of days how other people are doing cannulas and other procedures and uh, they will teach you as well like this is the uh, way how you find the most common areas to find a vein and what is a septic non touch technique to do those procedures so and then ask people around to teach you that is for cannula and for prescriptions uh, there's bnf for children that is separate bnf from uh, adult bnf so everybody use bnf and in uh, pediatric icu and neonatal icu prescriptions are different and the, those different prescriptions are mostly they are done by the registrar or the consultants mm-hmm. the difficult ones the infusions and those things but if uh, you are expected to do the prescription and you don't know how to do it ask mm-hmm. okay, don't hesitate just ask that you don't know how to write this prescription and even if you're in doubt after writing the prescription before giving it to the patient or giving it to the sending it to the pharmacy ask the senior to check your prescription if it is correct if you are in doubt so uh, everybody in pediatrics is supportive and then uh, we use uh, bnf for children and the most of the dosages for the drugs they are by weight or by age so that should be straightforward and easy yeah and uh... if if somebody is starting at middle grade obviously they must have got some experience back home in their home countries international middle grade they are coming here and they also can complain or not complain but they can also feel that uh, the system here is quite different so can you tell us you know, for example if somebody is coming from india or pakistan what kind of challenges they will face as a middle grade level and what sort of responsibility they will they might feel okay. i i have i've worked with a few people as well who uh, came as a middle grade here uh, from pakistan and india uh, what they what i felt from their experience they had they had loads of experience in, in uh, back home and when they come here system is different pediatrics like seeing the patient and uh, identifying the uh, diagnosis is same uh, they have loads of experience that they, they can identify like this patient has this but the difference comes in the management here patients are managed like uh, whatever is written in the book most of the patients are being managed that way so what what they feel difficulty is one thing is they have been working in uh, back home at a senior level in a different environment like nurses would do a lot of things back home and juniors would do a lot of things and the uh, the doctor at the in the middle grade middle grade level or at the uh, uh, let's say senior registrar level 
they will only see the patients they don't even write the prescriptions and anything but here things are different is uh, here uh, middle grade responsibility is they, they are the i think the showrunner on, on on the pediatric unit so they support juniors and they have to feed back to the consultants as well mm -hmm. so they are basically running the show on the pediatric ward uh, so the the responsibility lies most of them most of the time on the middle grades in pediatrics expectation from them is they should know all the most common uh, problems in pediatrics and the management of them okay and if they are not sure they know they should know where to seek the uh, help and that is the guidelines every single unit every single trust has their own guidelines okay and they treat patients according to their guidelines Okay. And there, there are like trust-wise guidelines, hospital-wise guidelines, and then there are uh, regional guidelines in pediatrics everywhere. And when when you come to uh, the UK, first thing to do is uh, get to familiarize yourself with the guidelines, especially where they are, and read the most common ones. And unless it's an emergency, just when you see a patient, you don't know what to do, just open the guideline on the trust computers and see what what, what does they say. How, what to do in, in this scenario uh, for example if you have a patient in diabetic ketoacidosis okay you know the diagnosis okay this is diabetic diabetic ketoacidosis start the first uh, saline infusion so you have half an hour to one hour to go on to the insulin open the guidelines they will tell you what bloods to send for for the diagnosis and what uh, uh, what amount of insulin and which insulin and how to prescribe that everything they'll tell you, and then they'll tell you all the monitoring you have to do for the diabetic ketoacidosis, whether you need to call your consultant, whether you need to call endocrinology consultant, everything is written in the guidelines. So the first thing is to familiarize yourself with the guidelines, and then uh, middle grade is, expect is expected to run the show. So for the new starter, as I said earlier, read the guidelines on, on your trust, and then if you don't know anything, ask. Ask your consultant. Consultants are very supportive for the new people who come like first week or two weeks. I remember when I first came to the UK, I had like six, seven years of experience as a middle grade in another European country. Even then, first couple of days, consultants were, cons uh, when I was on call, consultants were with me uh, until late, 8, 9 p.m. And they were supporting me on my long days that mm -hmm. like a brother is new here and they were supporting me like, okay, this is mm -hmm. how we do things here. Okay, they, they'll they'll give you a tour, they'll give you uh, induction at the start and they, they will help you for your starting days. That And, and it, it, it's up to yourself how quickly you pick up things and how quick, quickly you uh, uh, do things. This is, uh, and, and everybody expects you that when, when you are told like in the induction how to run your, the trust computers, how to see the IT system and emails, mm -hmm. everything, everybody expects that. Uh, you will know things unless you don't know don't say yes you know okay, okay? keep learning keep learning once, once you learn then say yes you have learned it this and is it. Yeah. this uh, you mentioned on calls a few times uh, so in periodics i am assuming you have long days which means that you work 12 hours from 9 a.m to 9 p.m and then you have the nights yep. uh, maybe 9 p.m to 9 a.m next day and the weekends like that as well yeah so when as a junior doctor uh, you are on, when you're on call, do you have a middle grade on site as well? What is the setup like um, and what sort of support you have during the, the setup is uh, in most units uh, these days uh, for a long day, for a week, so for a week days, for a long day, you have a, one consultant from uh, 9 a.m. to 5, 5, 5 p.m., which is called hot week consultant on the watch. Okay, and they, they, they'll, they'll do round with you and Tell all the plans, and if you need help, you just ask them straight away. And then at uh, four o'clock or five o'clock, depending on where you're working, they, they do an evening uh, handover, and then an, another consultant comes in, mm -hmm. and they stay until eleven p.m. So there is a consultant from nine a.m. until eleven p.m. Okay? okay, they have to stay here. The the, the on call person who is from five p.m. to eleven p.m. That's called the resident shift for consultants. That is a new thing which has started a few years back. So you have a consultant on the unit physically present there from 9 a.m. to uh, 11 uh, p.m. at night. 
and then from 11 pm until uh, in the morning 9 am the consultants are on call from home so the days shifts are like they are you start at 9 and then finish at 9 and the night person starts at 9 pm until 9 am in the morning and the rota works is like most units have like the district general hospital for registrar rota it is one in six one in seven which means like you have uh, weekdays nights every six weeks and weekend nights every six weeks so what happens is most of the time every six weeks you have two sets of nights which is first week you get four nights monday to thursday and the following week you get nights from uh, friday to sunday three nights and then no nights for four or five weeks and when you are as a junior doctor working in the department do you, are you the one dealing with emergencies coming through a and e coming through gps and all that how do you, how does uh, it, how does it work the emergencies the emergency is what happens is uh, all the patients who comes in walk, who comes walk in without any referrals they go to the ane we don't see them they go to the ane and then if ane feels that this patient should go home they send, send, send them home and if they feel that they need to be seen by pediatrics then the ane refers them to us yeah. that is one referral uh, one referral place we get other referrals we get from the gps they can be during the day time or on call gps uh, like with who works uh, out of the hours so they ring our department it depends on the unit some in some departments the uh, band seven nurses the senior like uh, sister nurses they, they uh, keep the bleep or the phone with them and gps ring them or the registrar take the calls and uh, accept referrals and then the third referral com- can come from the community uh, midwives and community nurses so these are three like uh, places where we get like one is community either from gp or the community nurses and the third is uh, ed so they send us all the referrals we see only the referred patients mm. and then uh, we, we we just we most units has the call pediatric assessment unit and uh, all the patients comes in the pediatric assessment unit and we see all those patients in the assessment unit and then depending on them we we can keep them for short observation like for 5 hours 6 hours and then send them home or we can admit them to the ward from the assessment unit and you know most busy units they have separate registrar for the assessment unit and for the ward okay. depending on how busy the unit is so some smaller units can have same person covering both ward and the assessment unit and the same person who's uh, covering the assessment unit covers the emergency as well in emergency we can be called if there is a resuscitation resuscitation means somebody comes in with the rest or so unwell that we have to go there and uh, resuscitate them immediately it can be anything so uh, and in that case when we are resuscitating most of the times consultants come physically pediatrics is a lot of consultant led pediatrics and the most of the time consultants come to that resuscitation to support the resuscitation and i have not asked you about the outpatient so this is all you were describing the inpatient department so yeah. does a junior doctor go and do outpatient clinics as well or they shadow them with the seniors uh, yes uh, so uh, we go to the outpatient clinic but the clinics are uh, led by consultants so w- when we go to the clinics what they uh, do is the uh, consultants they give us few patients to see most of them are the follow up patients new patients mostly consultants see yeah. on their own okay mm-hmm. and uh, what happened is we see patients and then we uh, make decisions and then we uh, run those patients by the consultants so okay so okay. everything is consultant led mm-hmm. in outpatient so we see patients and we make decisions but those decisions should be run uh, by the mm-hmm. by, the consultant, by the consultant okay and so, the uh, sorry the other question was i think um, about a lot of people will ask you about what can they read or are there resources because you you did mention about a lot of about the guidelines that there are local guidelines and uh, regional guidelines national guidelines they should people be aware of but yeah. from the books point of view or is there anything else they should be reading um, if they have got job in pediatrics and they are coming to uk and they got a, a few weeks or a few months uh, to mm-hmm. make themselves equipped with that knowledge yeah so there are few things which uh, they should read uh, first is uh, i said the trust guidelines and then there are most common cases in pediatrics they they should read about in like in lot of detail 
uh, these days what we have is like time to time like there are things which are more common in pediatrics like the most of the time like 70 80 percent patients they'll be seeing the same thing so uh, i'll say assessment of fever in children when somebody comes in with have fever how to assess that and what are different differential diagnoses in age wise that is one thing there is a nice guideline on fever then most common is uh, they can they should read about asthma and viral induced bees in children and then upper respiratory tract infections and respiratory tract infection and pneumonia and uh, then uh, they should read about uti and the meningitis and then uh, the gastroenteritis in children so these are the common topics everybody should read about. These days, there is a, a lot of uh, cases coming in with uh, strep A as well. Mm. If somebody is joining these days, the trust will tell you about strep A anyway and their guidelines, but you can read about strep A and how to manage and what mm. is going on these days. It's a lot of that in news as well. Mm. And then reading about the resources, like where to read them, I think uh, once you will join the trust, read the guidelines. But before joining the trust, you can read NICE guidelines. NICE guidelines are available uh, freely. And then other thing, there is other uh, guidelines, which is called bedside guidelines, that partners in, uh, sorry, partners in pediatrics guidelines. Hmm. Okay, I can share the uh, snapshot of that as well. Like uh, how does the cover look like? They, they have guidelines in pediatrics and in uh, neonates. And then book-wise, any book. I don't recommend any particular book for reading it because the here people don't read books. They read the latest papers and the latest guidelines, like what is coming on. The books, they get outdated quickly. So okay. I won't recommend any particular book, but the guidelines, these guidelines, which I mentioned, patterns in pediatrics, they have all the common uh, uh, updates. Condition. Yeah, conditions. So once you will join your trust, they will give you access to either up to date or to okay. be the best practice. Mm -hmm. So you can, which which is not found in the guidelines, you can read on the up to date or BMJ best practice or PubMed the latest mm -hmm. articles. What are the people doing? So these are the I, I would say the best resources for to learn from and the common topics, the common diseases you should know when you're coming in another junior. Middle grades would already know what what are the common diseases and the they don't need to read extra, but the middle grades, what they need to learn about fast extra, I think about the safeguarding. Safeguarding is entirely different here as compared to the back back home. So they need to book the course for safeguarding as soon as they come in and uh, need to learn about how to safeguard children. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you for um, the valuable knowledge you've given us and a lot of uh, important tips. Is there anything else you want to say to the IMGs who are joining in PEDS? Uh, anything else that you think will be useful for them? I think uh, uh, I've told most of the things, but uh, uh, don't feel uh, anxious or don't feel worried uh, joining in pediatrics. Everybody is supportive here and they know that you're coming to a new system. And uh, most of the people, what they what they're worried is when they come here, they have this uh, in their mind, like they have to study and pass the exams and everything. Okay, and I tell to the most of, the, like everybody when they come in, like get yourself settled in the system first, in first few months, and then your exams, you are going to get your exams anyway. Okay, mm -hmm. get yourself adjusted in the system first. That should be the priority. Uh, read the guidelines, get adjusted, get adjusted to the unit and the system first and then go on towards the exam. Okay. That's the only thing. Okay. Thank you very much for your uh, time. And I think it will be useful for people to listen to this and then uh, reflect on how to make best of their time in pediatrics. Okay. No so thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.